the Tennessee Volunteers football program loses because it has a sense of entitlement. I'm Marky e. Bilson, and I've said it over and over and over again. I want to give you some examples. Let me just say that you heard about a college student who threatened to shoot up the school. He was arrested on a domestic charge, and then it was found out that he had a restraining order against him in another state. Now, the you know domestic charge, the uh, it decided that the uh, alleged victim was not going to press charges, but still, that's a pretty heavy indictment on a college student. My guess is that if the college decided to kick that student out of their school, you wouldn't have a big problem with it. In fact, if you went to that school, or you had a loved one that went to that school, you'd probably be concerned for their safety if that student was allowed to continue studying at that school. Well, that student is Bryce Thompson, starting defensive back for the Tennessee Volunteers, and he'll be making the trip and playing against Georgia today. That is not a sense of entitlement, really. Hmm. Uh, Jeremy Banks, of course, we all know about him, just kicked off the football team yesterday when a second video came out that uh, in a uh, he tried to go to a party back on August the 24th and they didn't want to let him in and uh, he threatened to smack around a young woman because of that. Well, this occurs after, let me just ask you this, if a young man from Memphis was in Knoxville, and at four in the morning, on a Sunday morning, Saturday night, four in the morning, uh, pulled over for a traffic violation, it turns out that he's driving on suspended license, that he was supposed to go to court earlier on a rather simple traffic charge, but uh, yeah, he decided, nah, I don't need to do that, or he didn't show up. I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, and then he makes some rather alarming comments during his arrest. Where I come from, we'd shoot at the police. Uh, maybe I should have given you a run for your money, you know, and test out what the car should have. You know, that sort of thing. I guess that's not the exact quote, but that was what uh, Banks had said. If he was given the one phone call from the arrest point and not the jailhouse, he got all that free right. If that was just a young man from Memphis, you heard about this, would you really be saying, well, he's just a young man? Or would you be saying, put him in the clink? Because after all, if he cannot keep a court date, what makes you think that he's going to be able to keep appointments with the probation officer. This is something that never really had to happen, my goodness. I mean, you know, if you just show up for court on a relatively simple traffic charge, and for that matter, you don't drive at four in the morning on a suspended license, you're probably still playing football for the University of Tennessee. I mean, you really have to screw up royalty, royally. And that's also what Jeremy Pruitt did during the traffic stop when he was quoted as saying, this is the silliest thing I have ever seen in my life. I've worked at four places and never had no crap like this before here. Well-spoken man, this Jeremy Pruitt, is he not? He's getting almost $4 million a year to represent a institution of higher education. Let me read that again. This is the silliest thing I've ever seen. He's on the phone. In my life, I've worked at four places and never had no crap like this before here. Now, does this not speak to the Tennessee Volunteers' sense of entitlement? I think fans also have a sense of entitlement for Tennessee, maybe even the media, because I once remember reading this uh, off-season, a story from a sports writer said, you know, a school with the tradition of Tennessee, you know they're going to turn it around. Well, um, okay, Tell that to Nebraska. Tell that to Pitt. Tell that to Duke. Tell that to Yale. Tell it to Ole Miss or Arkansas. 
And yeah, just because in 1998 the Vols won does not mean that in 2019 or in 2020 they will. But we can discuss a lot about, uh, you know, what's gone on off the field with Tennessee, and it doesn't look good, uh, you know, coming also after the Johnson-Williams uh, rape allegation a few years ago. It really is not looking good for the Tennessee Volunteers. It doesn't look good for Jeremy Pruitt, who could really put his foot down, say, no more of this, and although, yeah, it might mean one extra loss for the Vols this year, the season is lost at least you'd be instituting a culture of discipline. And that would help the Vols out a lot in the long run. You know, I know that Pruitt is in only his second year, but I think we can safely say that there are a lot of question marks, and I personally don't think he's going to make it. Give him time! It takes time to build a program! I get... Problem is, Pruitt isn't going to get any more intelligent, and he's not going to become better spoken. Right now, also, the Tennessee Volunteers, out of 14 teams in the SEC, rank 11th in recruiting, according to rivals, in the conference. Only schools ahead of them, Missouri, or excuse me, the only schools that Tennessee is ahead of, Missouri, Arkansas, Vanderbilt. Yeah, how's that for program building? Pruitt continues to put his foot in his mouth, be it in talking to police, be it comparing the program to the Titanic, and I really think he is screwed up even naming the starting quarterback for Georgia. Not that he's naming Brian Maurer, but that he didn't name Brian Maurer earlier. You know, as it stands, just a game ago, uh, after a relatively strong performance against Chattanooga, uh, Pruitt spoke of you know, he, he was combatant with the press almost, you know, we don't care who you think should play quarterback, you know, this sort of thing. And it seemed to be a big vote of confidence for his starting quarterback, Jared Guarantano. A half later, he's benched and then put back in. And then his practice time is being split. If I was Jared Guarantano at that point, I would have demanded from Jeremy Pruitt, tell me where you stand. My goodness, you're thinking of starting a quarterback who was 4 of 13 against both Florida and Chattanooga. Well, that's who they're going to go with against Georgia. I don't think it's the worst move in the world. Uh, despite that lackluster performance by Brian Maurer, yes, he is the future. You're always going to be the future if you're the freshman and uh, not the junior. I do also sense uh, Guarantano is Butch Jones' recruit. Came to Tennessee in large part because Jones had coached his father at Rutgers. Uh, Pruitt's recruit is Brian Maurer. Coaches like to play their own. All right, yeah, lost season, go with the freshman, see what it does. But for Guarantano, who's already graduated, what, does, what kind of a message does this send? This player's already graduated, and uh, he's getting benched. This player over here threatened to shoot up the school he's starting. This player over here took two TMZ videos for him to get kicked off the team and a trip to jail. Hmm. If I'm Guarantano, I'm transferring. No other way around it. I do not know where I stand with the coaching staff. And really, not naming Maurer until Friday, uh, the day before the game, that's also a horrible look because it shows that either you're indecisive or the players don't know where they stand because you didn't make a decision or you didn't tell the media about it until Friday. Spare me, we're trying to fool Georgia. Georgia doesn't care what bad quarterback you play against them. Really, they're going to do their own thing, and they're going to win as long as they find their way to Neyland Stadium. So that's, you know, don't give me this, you're trying to fool the other team. That No, no, no. Uh, but right now it just appears that Pruitt is in over his head as a head coach. I have always said that I believe that he was hired to take orders from athletic director Phil Fulmer. It's well known. Phil Fulmer never thought he should have gotten the axe in 2008. So now, you know, he's got his own coach that he can sort of give orders to and, uh, you know, isn't going to be all that, 
eh, he's not going to really go against his boss, you know, and all that. He doesn't have a lot of options against, uh, uh, you know, to go elsewhere unless he's going to be a coordinator somewhere, you know, yeah. So there you go. But the problem here is, although, yeah, it is now, after 16 games, readily apparent that Pruitt is in over his head, who would be potentially hiring another coach? Well, you could say Jimmy Haslam. I mean, you know, how'd that work out the last time he chose a head coach? Yeah, <laughs> guy's going to Rutgers, it looks like now. That could be, if Greg Schiano does go to Rutgers, that could be a very interesting study. Who wins more in future seasons, Rutgers or Tennessee? And, I mean, yeah, it's unthinkable at one time, but it's now on the table, folks. The other thing. Phil Fulmer was very instrumental in hiring Carl Torbush to be the first head coach at East Tennessee State when the Buccaneers revived their football program in 2015. Torbush's record was 11-22, and and it did seem to be the sort of hire that a person whose heyday was 1998 would also hire. Torbush, of course, in 1998 was the head coach at North Carolina. Uh, he was hired from Liberty when they were still FCS when ETSU got him. So he was hiring for yesterday. Hey, Alabama's good. Let's hire, not their offensive coordinator, their defensive coordinator. It doesn't seem like what you do. I mean, you know, it's sort of, you know, scuttlebutt. I've been out of it, all this. Yeah, well, let's hire. We can't beat them, so let's join them. Let's get... And then you get Jeremy Pruitt in. So you've got 11 and 22 and 6 and 10. Those are the coaches that Phil Fulmer has hired. And so, yeah, if the Vols went looking for a new coach after this year, that's who'd be making the hire to replace Jeremy Pruitt. Not good. I'm Marky Bilson.